and welcome to today's maths lesson. So today marks the start of 9-12 which is all on algebra so the learning objective for today is to know how to use index laws to simplify algebraic expressions. On the screen is your knowledge retrieval, six questions. Please pause the video here for 10 minutes, work through these six and answer as many as you can. We'll mark the answers in a minute. Okay guys, so here's your answers. So again, please pause the video here, mark these answers. Okay, so previously this year we've covered index laws and there are two index laws you're gonna need for this lesson. Those rules are below. So the first one is, the index law of multiplication where it says that if you multiply two base numbers raised to powers in the resultant answer you add those two powers together so an example of this is 2 to the power 5 times 2 to the power 3 gives 2 to the power of 5 plus 3 which gives 8 okay and then likewise when you're dividing two base numbers raised to powers instead of adding this time you're going to subtract so an example of this is 5 to the power of 7 divided 5 to the power of 3 equals 5 to the power of 7 minus 3, which gives 4 as an answer. So guys, I'd like you to pause the video here, please. Copy down both these rules and you can refer back to them later on in the lesson when you need them. So copy down these two for me, please, while you pause this video. Thank you. Okay, so we've got example one and example two here. So I'll go through the I do. I'll ask you to pause it and then copy down the we do as well, please. So for the first one, we've got 5D times 3E times two. And I like to break this down to two steps, which you can see in the success criteria here. My first step is to multiply or divide any numbers. So First off, I'm going to do 5 times 3 times 2 to start this off. 5 times 3 times 2. 5 times 3 gives me 15, times 2 gives me 30. So I know the number at the front of my answer is going to be 30. And then it's apply the correct index law to any common terms. And in this, we have two terms, D and E. They're not common. But I'm still going to multiply those two, so I'm going to do D times E, which I'm going to write DE. So my final answer to this is going to be 30 DE. So can you please pause the video there for a second and copy that down and then try the we do. Have as long as you need to do that. Right, apologies, I just accidentally drew on this screen. I'll just rub that off. Okay, guys, hopefully you've unpaused the video. You've had a go at this. I'll go through it and give you my answer. So again, first step, just multiply or divide any numbers. So five times four times two. Let's start off with that. So five times four times two. Five times four gives me 20 times 2 is going to give me 40. So I know my answer to this is going to begin with 40. Then apply the correct index law to any common terms. Again, we have two terms and they are uncommon. So it's D times M, which I'm going to write DM. So my answer to this is going to be 40 DM. So give yourself a big tick and green pen if you got that right. Well done if you did. Okay, so for example two, and again guys, you can pause it and you know just write down that solution if you made any mistakes. Feel free to do that. Example two says 5d to the power 9 times 3e times 2. So again, multiply or divide any numbers. So let's start off by doing 5 times 3 times 2. 5 times 3 gives 15 times 2. It's going to give me 30 as an answer. So I know my answer to this is going to begin with 30. And then apply the correct index law to any common terms. Again, we've got two terms. They are uncommon, but we're still going to multiply them together. So d to the power 9 times by e, 
which I'm going to write d to the power 9e. So my answer for this is going to be 30 d to the power 9e. So guys, if you would pause the video here, please, copy down that I do, and then have a go at the we do. Take as much time as you need to copy this down. Have a go at that next one. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go, you've paused the video and you've had a go at this we do. So first step, again, should be multiplying these numbers, five times four times two. So five times four gives me 20, times two gives me 40. So I know whatever the answer to this is, the coefficient is gonna be 40. And then apply the correct index law to any common terms, but we've just got uncommon terms. We've got D and we've got M to the power seven. So we're gonna multiply those two together, D times M to the power seven. D times M to the power seven, rewrite DM seven. So my answer to this is gonna be 40, dm7, dm to the power 7, I should say. So again, feel free to pause it here and then check that answer. If you didn't get it right, maybe copy the, the correct solution down. And if you did get it right, you know, give yourself a big tick and green pen and well done. Okay, so you can pause the video here for a second, have a look at these examples and think what's different about these ones, the previous ones you've seen. I'm going to start off by going through this I do on example three. And again, I'm going to start by multiplying the numbers. So I've got six, I've got four, I've got two. So I'm going to start off by going six times four times two. Six times four gives me 24 times two. That's going to give me 48. And then if you did pause the video and think about what's different, or if you didn't need to pause the video, in fact, you'll notice that in this one, we've actually got common terms. We've got, we've got Ds, yeah? We've got D to the power nine here. We've got D to the power five here. So this is where step two is really gonna come in and apply the correct index law to any common terms. We've got D to the power nine, and we're gonna multiply that by D to the power five. Hopefully you've all written down those index laws I told you to earlier. This is d to the power 9 times d to the power 5. Remember that index law states that when we multiply two of the same base numbers, or base terms in this case, raised to powers, we add those powers together. So this is going to give me d to the power of 9 plus 5 for 14. Okay, so my final answer to this is going to be 48 d to the power 14. So if you would, pause the video there for a second, copy that one down, and then have a go at that next we do, please. I'll go through it in a second, but just pause the video here, have a go yourselves. Right, okay, so for this next one, we're going to do, again, the numbers multiplied first, so 6 times 7 times 2. So 6 times 7 gives 42 times two, it's gonna give me 84. And then apply the correct index law to any common terms. We've got m to the power four times m to the power seven. m to the power four times m to the power seven. That's gonna give me m to the power of four plus seven, which equals 11. So my answer is 84 m to the power 11. So once again, pause the video here and, you know, copy that down if you didn't do it yourself or mark your answers, check yours is the same as mine, check you got the same answer. If you didn't, try and spot where you made a mistake and we'll go through this example next, okay? Okay, so moving on to example four now. And again, you can pause the video here for a second, check what's different about this one. And if you have checked what's different, it might have appeared to you that, you know, we've got a negative power in here. Also on the end, we've got a D just on its own. Now, an important thing to remember is when we've got this D on its own, that essentially means D to the power one. So you can write that down if it helps you. Okay, remember that's D to the power one. 
So start off with the numbers. We've got 6, we've got 4, we've got 2. And we're multiplying these together. So let's start multiplying those numbers. 6 times 4 times 2. 6 times 4 gives me 24. Times 2, that's going to give me 48. Okay, so I know my answer to this is going to begin with 48. Then, applying the correct index laws to any common terms. This one, we've got three common terms. D to the power 9 times d to the power negative 5 times d. And remember that last one is to the power 1. That's important. Don't forget about that one. So this is going to give me d to the power of 9 plus negative 5, which subtracts. So we're going to have 9 take away 5, which is 4. Plus that 1 is going to give me d to the power 5. Okay. So 48 d to the power 5. So once again, just pause the video here, copy down that, and then have a go at that we do yourself. Okay, so for the next one, again, start with the numbers. 6, 7, 2, those being multiplied together. So 6 times 7 times 2. 6 times 7 gives me 42. Times 2 gives me 84. And then we've got m to the power minus 4 times m to the power 7 times m on the last one. Not forgetting that this m essentially is equivalent to m to the power 1. Don't forget about that one. Minus 4 plus 7 gives 3 plus 1 gives 4. So this is going to be m to the power 4. So my answer is going to be 84 m to the power 4. So once again, you can pause the video here, have a look at that solution for a sec. If you've done it, well done. Mark yours in green pen, compare yours with mine, see if you can spot any mistakes, if you do have any at all. If you've got the same answer, really well done. That's absolutely brilliant. And if you haven't done that, make sure to copy it down now, okay? Right, okay, so we'll do our last two, last two examples, then I'll give you some questions to practice yourselves. So once again, start with the numbers 5 and 3. Let's multiply those two together. 5 times 3 gives 15. So I know my answer is going to begin with a 15. I've got d to the power negative 9 times by d to the power 5. And once again, we know our multiplication law for index laws. It's minus 5 plus, minus 9, sorry, plus 5. So this is going to give d to the power of minus 9 plus 5 which equals minus 4 so it's 15 d to the power of negative 4 so once again please pause the video here copy this one down and then take as long as you need to have a go at the we do for me okay so for the we do Start with the numbers again, we've got 5 and we've got 4. The coefficients, I should say, that is the correct term. So 5 times 4 equals 20. So I know this is going to begin with 20, okay? Then I've got m to the power 4 times m to the power negative 7. So m to the power of negative 4 plus negative 7, which is going to get negative 3. So this equals 20m to the power of negative 3. Really well done if you got that right yourself. Pause the video here, copy that down or mark that in green pen. If you did make any mistakes, try and spot it, spot where you did. And if you got that answer right, then really well done. Keep up the good work. Okay, let's go on to example 6 then. So we've got 5d to the power of negative 9 times by 2 over 11. And the first thing that should strike you, what's different about this, is we've got a fraction here. But don't be afraid of that fraction, it's just a number. And we've dealt with this in previous um, topics this year. So again, start by multiplying those two numbers. Let's start by doing 5 times 2 over 11. This may be a fraction, but it's still just a number. We can deal with it. 5 times 2 over 11, well, 5 times 2 is going to give me 10 over 11. We keep that denominator the same. Check this can't simplify, which it can't, 
because 10 and 11 have no common factors except for 1. And then I've only got d to the power of negative 9 on this one, so it's nice and easy to deal with. I don't have to multiply that by anything, don't have to change it. So my answer simply is going to be 10 over 11 d to the power of negative 9. So please just take a minute, pause the video, copy that one down and then try that we do for me. Okay, so hopefully at this stage you've taken a minute, you've had a go at this. So it's 2 over 11 times 4 to start off with. I'm just multiplying the numbers first, as we always do. So do the 4 times the 2, which gives 8 in the numerator. We keep the denominator the same, which is 11. And then in terms of terms, algebraic terms, we've only got m to the power of negative 7. So we can just keep that the same. Our answer is going to be 8 over 11 m to the power of negative 7. So once again, pause the video here, you know, check you've got that answer. If you haven't, look at my work and see what you did differently and correct it. But if you have got these right and you have been following along, you know, you're doing really well. Keep it up and we'll give you some questions to practice in a minute. OK, so here's question one. Here's question two. So if you can, please pause the video here and take as long as you need to work through these questions. OK. OK, guys, so there are your answers. So please, once again, pause the video here, mark those answers, mark as many as you've done. And then give yourself a score out of however many you've done as well. Okay, so now we're going to move on to using the index laws to simplify algebraic expressions when we have to divide two expressions, so or two terms. So have a look at this first one, 24a over 27b. Now, we're going to approach this similar, similar to how we approached the last ones, where we're going to deal with the numbers first and then deal with any terms second. So I think everyone who's watching this video, or at least most of you watching this video, will know how to simplify fractions, or you should know how to simplify fractions. So let's look at 24 over 27 first, and let's just treat that separately to the a and the b for the minute. Now, if you were presented with this question, simplify 24 over 27, like I say, I think most of you who are watching this video should be able to access this. So 24 over 27, we've got to simplify the two numbers first. So first step is pick the highest common factor of 24 and 27. What's the highest common factor of 24 and 27? You can have a think about that for a second now. So the highest common factor of 24 and 27 is actually going to be 3. So I'm going to take 3 out of a common factor of 24 and 27. So divide both top and bottom by 3. How many 3s go into 24? It's going to be 8. How many 3s go into 27? It's going to be 9. So I know... In my new fraction, I'm going to have 8 on the numerator, I'm going to have 9 on the denominator. Now, second, we're going to deal with these two terms. And first thing we check is, have we got any common terms? Have we got any common letters in the question? And this one, we've got A on the top, we've got B on the bottom. Those two are not common, they are different letters, so we cannot go any further with them. So we just leave them as they are. So the A stays on the top and the B stays on the bottom. And this is our simplified fraction. So guys, can you please pause the video here, copy that one down and then move on to that we do. OK, so 18A over 27B. Hopefully you've had a go at this now. So once again, deal with the numbers first, 18 over 27. And like I say, I feel like we should be confident with simplifying fractions. If we saw this 
If we see this question, sometimes we get intimidated, but if we see this, we know how to do it easily. They're very similar. 18 and 27, what's the highest common factor of those two numbers? Hopefully most of you are able to identify that the highest common factor of those two is going to be 9. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by 9. How many 9s go into 18? It's going to be 2. How many 9s go into 27? It's going to be 3. So 18 over 27 simplifies to 2 over 3. And then we look at our terms. We've got A and we've got B. They are uncommon terms, so they just stay as they are. 2A over 3B. Check that's your answer. If you got that right, really well done. If you didn't, please copy down this solution. And we're going to move on to this next one. So pause it until you're ready to do so. OK, so 9A over 27. So the difference between this one and this one is we've got a term on the top, but not on the bottom this time. And that's just going to make what we've got to do even easier, really. Deal with the numbers first. 9 over 27. What's the highest common factor of those two? Have a think for a moment. And yes, it's going to be 9. Well done if you said that. So divide top and bottom by 9. How many 9s go into 9? It's going to be 1. How many 9s go into 27? It's going to be 3. So 9 over 27 simplifies to 1 over 3. And then deal with the terms. And have we got any common terms on the top and the bottom? No, we do not. We've only got an A on the top, nothing on the bottom. So we just leave that A up there. So I'm going to write 1A over 3. And you could, of course, represent this as A over 3, which is exactly the same thing. So really well done if you've done that as well. OK, pause the video there. Make sure you copy that one down and then go on to this we do, please. OK, so for the we do, we've got 27 over 3B. So again, deal with the numbers first. 27 over 3. Identify the highest common factor, and it's going to be 3. Now, obviously, there's a different way to do this. Remember that fraction is just division. The top number is divided by the bottom number. So you could simplify this to 9 over 1 by saying how many 3's go into 27, 9, how many 3's go into 3, 1. But also just remember that 27 over 3 is just 27 divided by 3, which just gives me 9 as an answer. So I can in fact just write this as 9, but then we've got this B on the bottom which presents a little bit of trouble. Because there's nothing on the top that I can cancel this B with, I'm going to write it as 9 over 1 and then I'm just going to leave that b alone okay so it's 9 over 1b which is the same as 9 over b but if you did the other way and did 27 divided by 3 remember that this b on the bottom of the fraction is essentially b to the power negative 1 so you could also have as an answer 9b to the power negative 1 so any one of these three answers would be correct and would suffice. So really well done if you've got any one of those. OK, let's look at some different examples. Right, OK, so let's start in the first one. 27 over 54, a to the power 5. So once again, deal with those numbers first. 27 over 54. Now, you might have to do this in steps if you're not really confident on your numbers and say, you know, what's the common factor of 27 and 54, preferably picking a prime number if you're doing it in steps. But I'm quite confident on my numbers and I know that the highest common factor of these two, well, try and spot it. 27 is half of 54. Yeah, so I can take out 27 as a common factor. So how many 27s go into 27? That's going to be 1. How many 27s go into 54? That's going to be 2. So I can simplify this to 1 over 2 to begin with. And then I have to deal with my terms. And I've only got a to the power 5 on the bottom, nothing on the top. So that a to the power 5 stays where it is. So it's going to be 1 over 2a to the power 5. 
So please pause the video here, copy that one down, and then have a go at that we do for me. Okay, so 9 over 54, a to the power 5. Deal with the numbers first. 9 over 54. Have a think for a moment. What's the highest common factor of 9 over 54? Well, 9 and 54, sorry. And it's going to be 9. Well done if you did that. You could also do this in steps and, you know, take out 3 as a common factor first. Just remember that means you're going to have to simplify it again later. So how many 9s go into 9? It's going to be 1. How many 9s go into 54? That's going to be 6. So the 9 and the 54 simplify to 1 over 6. Remember we've got this a to the power 5 in the bottom. We've got nothing on the top. So we can't cancel anything out. It's going to be a to the power 5. Really well done if you got that right. If you haven't got that down, please pause the video here, copy it down. We're going to move on to the next I do. Okay, so 12a to the power 9 and 54a to the power 5. Have a think for a minute. What's different about this question to what we've seen in all the previous questions? Just have a think about that for a moment. And you would be correct if you said that we've got actually, we've got a common letter on the top and the bottom. We've got a common term. We've got a's on the top and a's on the bottom. So how do you think what that's going to mean for our answer? But the first step, I'm going to do just the same as always. I'm going to multiply or divide any number. So I'm going to deal with the numbers first. So 12 over 54. Common factors are 12 and 54. Have a think for a moment. And I'm thinking for a minute. The highest one's going to be 6, okay? So the highest common factor of those two is going to be 6. And again, you could do this in two stages. They're both even numbers, so you could have just halved them both to start off with. That would have been fine. You would have just need to simplify it again later. But 6 is the highest common factor. How many 6s go into 12? It's going to be 2, so 2 goes in the top. How many 6s go into 54? That's going to be 9. So 12 over 54 simplifies to 2 over 9. So I know whatever my fraction ends up as, I'm going to have a 2 on the top, I'm going to have a 9 in the bottom. Then deal with these numbers, these common terms, I mean these letters, sorry. They are common terms, they're both A's. And we've got A to the power 9 on the top, we've got A to the power 5 on the bottom. Now remember our index laws that we covered at the start. Hopefully you've still got them written down. And have a think for a minute, what happens to our index laws when we divide two of the base letters or two base numbers raised to powers. What happens? And you'd be correct if you said we subtracted those. So remember that a to the power 9 divided by a to the power 5 is just going to leave a to the power of 9 take away 5. It's going to leave a to the power 4, 9 take away 5. So if we cancel out 5 in the bottom, we take 5 off the top, that's going to leave a to the power 4 on the top, okay? 9 take away 5 leaves the 4 on the top. So please pause the video there and have a go at the next we do. I'll go through it in a second. Okay, so we've got 12a to the power 9 over 14a to the power 4. So deal with the numbers first, 12 over 14. Highest common factor of these two is going to be 2. So divide both top and bottom by 2. That's going to leave me with 6 over 7. So I'm going to have a 6 on the top. I'm going to have a 7 on the bottom. And I've got 8 to the power 9 on top. I've got 8 to the power 4 on the bottom. Deal with these two letters. 9 take away 4 leaves 5. So I'm left with 8 to the power 5 on the top. Okay. Really well done if you got that right. I'm going to give you some independent practice questions now that you can practice on your own and see how you get on with those. All right, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so if you can pause the video here, please, and just spend as long as you need, maybe 10 minutes, more if you need it, 
have a go at as many of these as you can please and I'll give you the answers again in a minute. Don't be going back to that mistake I made and don't be pausing on the answers. Please work through these and then we'll look at the answers afterwards. Okay, and there's your answers, guys. So if you would, again, please pause the video here, mark your answers, mark them in green pen, give yourself a score out of however many you did. And that will mark the end of this lesson. So thank you so much for listening today, and hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson.